from the Children's Museum in Decatur. It's the Faber Files. Hello, I'm your host, Bill Faber. Because democracy demands debate, we present this in program of public issues and interests. Programs interesting and of, and of concern to our local community. Interviews held nowhere else on public TV or broadcast TV or radio. Today's special guest is Nicole Bateman, who is the director of the Illinois Children's Museum. Welcome, Nicole. Hi, thanks for having me. Here we are in this beautiful morning and already there's a hundred kids here. And there are. We are very packed with field trips all throughout, you know, May and then into the summer as well. We've had a really great June so far this year and uh, we have a lot of different, you know, folks, not just families, but field trips from different park districts throughout the area and daycares and centers where, you know, they might have an influx of children over the summer and they just need to get out and bring them to somewhere fun. What uh, what persuades mom or dad to want their kids or teachers bring their kids to the Illinois Children's Museum? Sure. Well, we have a lot of um, open play, but as we know, children learn best through play, and so that's what that's what we do here. You know, what might seem like kind of a just a, a fun paint wall or a fun exhibit is really an educational opportunity. So they're getting more than just a, a chance to run around and, and burn some energy. They're really learning a lot while they're here through our different exhibitions. Well, we'll do a tour of your first and second floor, and we'll see some of these exhibits and learn how they're used and why they're used. But how is it that the Illinois Children's Museum became located in Decatur. Sure. Well, back in um, 1990, there was a group of folks from the Junior Welfare Association and the Decatur Area Arts Council who felt that there wasn't enough arts and sciences uh, being taught in schools or, or enough time being dedicated to those topics, I should say. So they decided to start a children's museum based on those principles. So it started out at the Rock Springs Nature Center and they saw such rapid growth over just a short five-year span that they decided to then build its own museum, which is where we're located now this beautiful 20,000 square foot facility uh, located on Lake Decatur and South Country Club Road. So that's how we came to be um, and since then we've operated as a nonprofit organization so um, we do rely you know on our admissions income and the generosity of others to keep our doors open for the you know folks in our community and our area. What a great aim to make learning fun instead of um, hard. Yes absolutely absolutely and every exhibit we have you know there's just endless amounts of things that the kids can learn while they're in there. You know, the focus might be on one specific topic or another. It might be more arts focus or it might be more science focus. Um, as you'll see in some of our new exhibits though, um, we really kind of expand besides, or I should say beyond just arts and sciences into things like engineering and technology and things of those sorts. How is it that you became the director of the Illinois Children's Museum, Nicole? Oh, sure. Well, you know, I was very familiar with the museum as a volunteer and as a former board member. Um, and when the position opened up, you know, it really combined a lot of the things I enjoy. Not only business management, but um, volunteering and uh, nonprofit organization work and fundraising. And so kind of combining all of those together, it seemed like a, a good fit for myself. Um, but also, you know, my husband and my family and I are very invested in the community. And, and what better place to be able to give back and, and really make a difference for families than at the Children's Museum. What a difficult time to be the director of a non-for-profit in these very, very challenging economic times, especially in uh, central Illinois. It is. It's, it is difficult, um, but I see it as, you know, running the museum as a small business. We have folks that pay for our services. They pay admission to come in our doors and things like that. So, like any good small business, I think it's important to take a step back and look at how you can reinvest and how you can draw more people in. So, through new programming, new exhibits, through some increased marketing efforts, um, we've really been able to do that. So, um, ideally, I would love to, in a few years, be able to... Um, um, you know, use our fundraisers as an opportunity to spend every single penny that's raised through those on brand new exhibits instead of helping to cover, you know, maybe some of the overhead costs and things like that that it takes to maintain this building. So kind of with that change in philosophy and mindset, um, it, it it makes it a little bit easier to, to run this type of nonprofit. You know, we're a little different than other nonprofits in the area where we're not, you know, um, serving the homeless or, you know, working in, in those fields that are... Um, really, what do I say, like human human service based. So it's a little different um, in that aspect where we do have people that pay for, for our goods and services. Um, but, you know, we, we make the best of the situation and, and try to, when we do have fundraisers, um, try to provide something fun and unique that folks are interested in being a part of. 
You know, we believe here on the Faber Files that media is very important and local media is very important. And one of the exhibits that you have for the children to teach them about writing skills and media is a, 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 a news, little newspaper um, uh, simulation? We do. Actually, we yes, so we have our uh, W Kids uh, TV station news channel where they can read the, you know, read the news live and they can see themselves on the TV and, and what child doesn't love to see themselves on TV or parents or grandparent for that matter. So, um, so that yes, that one is a really fun exhibit. Um, and then just, you know, as we look forward to adding new exhibits too, you know, incorporating elements of not only, um, you know, TV, but also radio and newspaper and all the different forms of communication that are out there today. So how many children pass your way through the gates here at the Illinois Children's Museum over the course of a year? Sure, we have about 60,000 annual visitors and they come from all over the country. So primarily within, you know, about a two hour radius, but we have folks, especially during the summertime and around the holidays that come from all over. You know, most, my understanding is that most children's museums are located in large urban areas and here we are in kind of a smaller community area. So it's really unique to have this, this asset here. Here. It is, absolutely. Um, we're very fortunate to have not only our, our sizable museum, um, but also one that is right next to Scoville Zoo. And you know, many towns will either, will have one or the other. They'll either have a children's museum or they'll have a zoo. But to have them both and to have them right next door to each other is fabulous. And you know, we're, we are very, very lucky to have that here in Decatur. And thankful, you know, to the, uh, to our forefathers from the museum and the, in the Decatur Park District to kind of marry the two and bring them together um, to share some space. Uh, people with great vision and dedication, a great combination. Absolutely, that's, the, you know, that's really what makes um, a, a city and an organization like this work. I'm ready for a tour, so we're going to hand it over to you, give you the mic, and maybe you can show us your special exhibits for the moms and dads, grandparents, and the kids. Great, we'd love to. Let's go. Okay. Okay, so here we are in front of one of uh, children's favorite exhibits. It's called our Under the Sea Paint Wall. And, um, you know, a variety, it's, it sounds kind of self-explanatory, a paint wall, but there's a number of things that they can do. So not only um, creating their own pieces of artwork, but, um, you know, taking, taking simple steps, like teaching kids about color. So we have blue, we have pink, we have green. We switch these out. Um, but it's a chance for kids to just explore and do those things that you wouldn't necessarily do at home, like painting or drawing on your walls at home. You can do that here. Yes, um, and we have a wonderful junior volunteer here that comes through our junior volunteer program in the summer. So she's just going to demonstrate, you know, a little bit about painting on the paint wall. So this is actually made out of um, auto windshield glass. So it's very easy to clean. Um, the paint is... Um, up, you know, goes on the wall very easily, so it's fun. Kids aren't going to get super frustrated and trying to get the paint out of the little cans. And it's also um, will not stain the clothes, um, which is great. You know, parents always appreciate that as well. It is washable. So, and then when the kids are finished, it just wipes right off with water. So you just spray it down. I won't, I won't destroy your beautiful creation, but just spray <laughs> the paint off there. And uh, yep, use one of the squeegees, and you just. Create yourself a clean wall and then you're ready to go with the next exhibit. Okay, and here we are at our water table exhibit. So as you can see, um, a lot of a lot of forces working here at once. So not only is it a fun kind of play table for the kids, but also teaches the kids about water motion and about damming water. And so they can use these fun little plastic tiles to change the course of the water flow throughout the table. So we have plenty of tiles for them to use, and then we have little things like rubber ducks and little boats for them to then float down and see how the water moves it throughout the exhibit. Okay, and this is our bubble room exhibit. So who doesn't love to blow bubbles, right? Well, these are huge, gigantic bubbles, as you can see from our lovely participants here. Um, you know, really, again, just a chance for kids to be creative and have a little bit of fun in um, a space where you wouldn't necessarily have at home or in your backyard. All right, and one of our most exciting features is Lucky's Climber. So as you can see, it is a two-story climbing structure where kids can climb in through the bottom and go all the way to the second floor. Now, while they can't get out on the second floor, there is still plenty for them to see through the openings and see through the skylight above. So um, Lucky's Climber is a 
an exhibit that is installed in a lot of um, museums throughout the country, but they're all unique and they're all very different. So when you've seen one, you haven't necessarily seen them all. And we actually have one of the originals. So be sure to come by. And if you're here, uh, yes, parents, you can climb Lucky's Climber as well. And now our next stop is going to be here in our grocery store, Johnston Supermarket. And there's a lot of things happening here besides just you know, role playing as, as adults do. Children are very familiar with doing a little grocery shopping with their parents, but here it really gives them an opportunity to, to think about making healthy food choices. So we have our produce bins over here and you can talk to your children about not only you know, what's the difference between a fruit and a vegetable, but what different types are, maybe sort them by color, sort them by size, a variety of different educational activities that are happening here. And then you can shop through our frozen foods, dairy, cereal, snacks, things like that. Kids can pick up a little miniature grocery cart made just for them, and then when they're finished shopping, they can check out here in the checkout lane. So the grocery store is a, is a fan favorite. It's been around for years, and we're actually excited to update it here this fall as a part of one of our new agriculture-based exhibits we're going to install called Seed to Shelf, where kids learn you know, where their food comes from, and then they will check it out at the grocery store. So kind of pulling the whole concept together. So be sure to check back in December when we install that new exhibit as well. All right, and this is one of our toddler areas called In My Backyard. And so, you know, we find it's important to have certain areas of the museum that are kind of sectioned off and gated in from the older kids. So this specific area is meant for children ages four and under. And, you know, oftentimes we get questions from parents or grandparents thinking, you know, is there really something for my two-year-old to do there? Well, I will tell you, as soon as the children are able to crawl, there's plenty of things you can do here. So you can see that, especially in this area. So we have a little vegetable garden for them to play in. They can learn a little bit about bugs and insects. Um, we have a fun little dog house as well for them to climb in and out of and then a little quiet corner for them to read a story in if you'd like. And there's also a fun um, little climbing backyard with a slide as well that we'll show you here in a minute. But again this is one of two toddler areas we currently have in the museum and um, we're, you know we're excited to be able to offer something for families for the really really small children as well. So we're excited that this winter in, um, f you know, late fall, early winter, we're going to install a new exhibit called Seed to Shelf. It's an agriculture-based exhibit highlighting the agriculture in the area, but also teaching an important concept of where your food comes from. So one of the features of the exhibit will be a small barnyard. We'll have a fun um, hay or straw loft and, and barn teaching kids a little bit about farm life, but also a picking field with corn and soybeans and fruits and vegetables. The kids will be able to pick those vegetables and produce and then put them into the loading dock, which will then teach them a little bit about sorting and processing, which is a really important component of some of our major manufacturers here in Decatur. And then they'll be able to push especially the fruits and veggies you know, those types of produce that they're most familiar with into the grocery store. And then when they go to the grocery store, then they'll be able to check those fruits and veggies out. So it's really kind of tying the whole concept together that food doesn't just show up on your plate, it comes from somewhere. So we're excited to introduce that. Again, it's called Seed to Shelf, and that will be coming this late fall and early winter. All right, and here we are in our W Kids TV station where kids can talk about the latest happenings in their lives and, and broadcast the news. It's a really fun, again, opportunity for them to role play by putting on, you know, little uh, little ties and suit jackets and whatnot and, and really playing the part. But it gives them a little bit of um, a chance to practice their self-confidence in, in reading a script and being on TV themselves. So again, every kid and, and parents and grandparent loves to see themselves on TV and this gives them a really fun, safe way to do that. All right, one of our other favorite exhibits here at the museum is the St. Mary's Hospital exhibit, where we have everything from uh, scrubbing in for surgery to taking care of infants in the nursery. Um, there's a lot of things that the kids can learn here about not only healthcare industry, um, but about you know showing compassion and taking care of others as well.
Okay, so this is our operation section of the hospital exhibit where um, kids can learn a little bit more about the functions of different, you know, internal organs in your bones. But then also we have this large operation table exhibit where much like the classic game operation, if you touch the metal to the side, it does give you a little bit of warning. But it also teaches the kids um, where the different bones and organs are in the body. Okay, and here at the Children's Museum of Illinois, we are fun for all ages. So, not just the little ones, but also teaching valuable skills to our older students, just like our junior volunteer here. So, um, talking a little bit about, you know, potentially having a, a career in nursing or, um, yes, learning about the different components that they might see in the hospital. So, we have things like crutches and the babies. We also have um, an x-ray machine here where they can put up their scans as well. So again, kind of teaching kids about different occupations that are available, but getting them familiar with these types of situations so that in the event they ever have to make a trip to the hospital, maybe it won't be quite as scary as what it would have been before their visit to the Children's Museum. And here we are in our Around the World exhibit. This is an exhibit that is um, teaching children and families about different cultures throughout the world. They get a chance to dress up in costume from different cultures. Uh, they also get a chance to um, play on our U.S. world map that teaches them a little bit about where the states are in different regions in the, in the country. So this exhibit um, was brought to you by the Sparks family and we're excited to you know bring a little bit of the outside world here in Decatur. Another fan favorite is our Super Service Center uh, where kids can learn a little bit more about the automotive industry. So as you see here, they have a car to work on where they can not only change the oil, but they can change tires, slide under the car and change the mufflers as well. Another opportunity for kids to learn a little bit more about the service industry that we rely so heavily upon. Okay, so here we are in our pizzeria exhibit where kids can learn all about the different, you know, topical ingredients and things that go into making a pizza. So we have a wonderful volunteer here making a pizza for us and we have different toppings. Again, another opportunity for you to teach and talk to your children about shapes, colors, vegetables, um, things that they're putting into their body, nutrients, things like that. They can then um, bake it in our brick oven pizza over here pizza oven and then they can check out and buy other yummy treats such as these delicious looking cupcakes. Again, another opportunity for them to role play in something that American kids are very, very used to, you know, eating pizza and things like that. So again, another chance for them just to get out and have fun. All right, in our newest exhibit called Ready, Set, Build, was just installed at the end of February. We're very, very excited about it. So as you would probably guess, uh, based on its name, Ready, Set, Build, it's all about building, but also touches on the topics of engineering and public works, things like how does the water get to your house? Um, how do, how do uh, buildings and structures come to be? One of the neat elements that we've incorporated into this is the use of QR codes. So QR codes are these little boxes that look like um, little codes, more or less scan codes, for parents and grandparents to use. Everybody's, uh, you know, for the most part used to mobile technology now, and this is a really neat way to use your mobile technology within the exhibit, but then also to be able to take some of the information home with you. Now, if you do not have a smartphone, we have also printed up these great cards for you as well. So, again, another opportunity for you to engage with your children. So if your child, let's say, is age three to five, ask them what color their hard hat is. To focus on colors. If they're a little bit older, ask them more about shapes and the mathematics behind some of the exhibit that you'll see inside. One of the features of the exhibit is the how tall structure and we thought it would be important to give kids a perspective of how tall buildings really are in, in relation to things that they might already know. So one of the items we've incorporated here at the bottom, and it's all to scale really, is our transfer house that we're familiar with in Decatur, Illinois. So you have the transfer house that reaches 41 feet tall compared to the largest tower in the world currently in Dubai. And so as you move around this four-walled structure, you see really how tall structures are. Everything from the St. Louis Arch to the Sears Tower um, and, and how they kind of compare in relation to other buildings and structures throughout the world. All right, inside our new system of Ready, Set, Build, we have a few folks here working hard building a brand new fort uh, out of our Ready, Set, Build Imagination Playground. So this is the bit itself, our newest one, features a lot of different elements. We have our Metro Fighter Homeowners Association workshop where kids can build their own Thank you. 
with companies like my car um, here in Decatur to cut out the steel skyline that you see in the background. We worked with Goods Flooring here to provide the flooring and uh, Decatur Blueprint Company to provide the awesome graphics that you see on the outside of the exhibit. So this is truly a local exhibit built by local hands that we're really proud of. Another one of the features of the Ready, Set, Build exhibit is our classic play table. So we have things that we're all familiar with like Lincoln Logs and Tinker Toys, those classic play, uh, play structures that we all grew up with, but again, just emphasizing the building aspect of it. So this is for our more mid-range children. For the small tots, we have um, some larger toys that are a little more age appropriate, such as just the classic blocks. We will uh, trade these out occasionally for Duplos and Legos, again, just reinforcing the building concept and how you can build out of different materials. One of the other very exciting features is our sand table. So we'll take you there next. All right, so it is like wet sand. One of our highlights here of the Ready, Set, Build exhibit is our new kinetic sand table. So kinetic sand, it's basically, it's real sand covered in silicone. So it's sand and silicone, which makes it um, a very cool texture, a little, a little different than sand that you're used to, but um, it builds great, as you can see. What are you building here, son? Uh, a mountain. A mountain. So we've got mountains, mountains, and we can have, you know, we've got fun things like bulldozers, things like that, that the kids can play with it as well. But um, it's a really neat feature, again, teaching the kids a little bit about science, um, but also just having fun with classic sand that everybody loves and, and enjoys playing with. So another new great exhibit we're going to install this summer is called Young at Art. And it focuses on different areas of the art. So we'll have an art studio for kids to be creative, a very large whiteboard or chalkboard for them to draw on, but also that allows us another space for programming. So, you know, maybe one day they're coming in and they're working with clay. The next day they'll be working with paper. You know, just uh, exploring the arts in that fashion. And then another section of the Young at Art um, exhibit will be the theater, the performance arts theater. So they'll be able to put on their own little shows and puppet shows, but also getting kids interested in, in the background of theater, such as lighting and staging and uh, you know drawing the curtains, things like that, that maybe um, they, they wouldn't otherwise think of. So as you walk through the museum, um, you're going to see our Looking Up campaign, which serves two purposes. We want everybody to know that things are really looking up here at the museum. But but also, if you literally look up, we have hung renderings throughout the museum above and around the proposed space uh, where those new exhibits will go. So we're currently fundraising for some, others we've already fundraised for, but uh, we always welcome you know, new ideas uh, as well. So as you come and visit and you, you see these renderings hanging throughout the museum, be sure and let us know what you think. And if you have any suggestions for new exhibits, we'd love to have them. Another great aspect we hear, have here at the Children's Museum of Illinois is our mess hall. So as you can see, it's full today with field trip kids enjoying their lunch, but um, it, it provides a great space. So if you and your family are out visiting and the weather is not quite conducive to eating your lunches outside, you're welcome to bring your lunches and snacks inside and eat here in our mess hall. Uh, we do use the space also for programming occasionally and on our first Friday of each month for our Family Fun Fridays, uh, we serve Papa Murphy's Pizza that night. So you can buy your pizza here, really make a night of it with your family here at the museum. So again, just another great space we have here at Children's Museum of Illinois. Here we have our air supply wall, which teaches kids about the dynamics of air and the movement of air. So as you can see, they're putting in different pieces through the tubes. And if they change, they can change the motion of the air as well by changing the different blocks on the supply wall. So again, another favorite, kids love it, parents love it, and again, just kind of reinforcing that science aspect of our museum. Here at Children's Museum of Illinois, when we have the opportunity to move our programming and our exhibits outside of our walls, we like to do that. So one thing that we've done this summer is plant a pizza garden. So it's part of our Family Science Sunday series, which occurs the second Sunday of each month. So in June, we planted the garden. And in July, as it says here on our poster, we're going to talk about watering the garden and the importance of irrigation. We'll also have a little bit of water table fun. And then in August, we're going to harvest the garden. 
Papa Murphy's Pizza is going to come on the second Sunday of August and we're going to harvest the ingredients in the garden and then everybody is going to make a little mini Murph pizza from Papa Murphy's to take home. So again, just reinforcing the fact, um, or, or I should say not the fact, but reinforcing the idea of where your food comes from. So kids that were able to help plant the garden, learn about it throughout the summer, then we'll get to pick the fresh uh, veggies and herbs and, and the like, and then put them on their pizza to take home. Okay, so in our pizza garden, we have all the traditional ingredients. So we have the tomatoes and the sage and the oregano and the garlic. We also have some other fun pieces like eggplant and some sunflowers, you know, some things that will visually uh, make the garden really appealing. But what we've done is we've planted it in sections like a pizza. So each pizza slice has a different uh, component of the pizza in it. And, um, you know, we then talk to the kids about why fencing is important. So it keeps all the little critters out from eating, from eating your your stock. Um, but again, it's a really neat experience. We are very thankful to our friends at Richland Community College, David McLaughlin and the Feinstein family who have really helped us put this together. Um, they run a really great program out there with their uh, produce markets on Saturdays. And so, uh, you know, working with community partners is not only important to the museum and the community, but really helps us bring to life really neat concepts such as the pizza garden. Nicole, thanks for that really exciting tour. I learned so much about the Children's Museum. Everyone's got to come out here to see Decatur's Illinois Children's Museum. Great. Well, yes, we welcome all visitors ages, you know, 2 to 92. There's definitely something for everybody to do here. You mentioned 60,000 kids through your doors. That's extraordinary. I can see why they want to come. Yes, you know, and many of their visits are, you know, an hour, two hours, sometimes three hours long. So there's no shortage of activities for families here at the Children's Museum of Illinois. Thanks for the tour on the Faber Files. You're welcome. Thanks for coming.